Hello everyone, our serial killer's name is John Wayne Gacy, also known as the Killer Clown. Um, my name is Katie. My name is Alejandra. My name's Ryan. My name's Karina. And then we'll get into the crimes committed. So John Wayne Gacy was a serial killer in the 70s that was convicted in the 80s. He was a serial killer and sex offender, and he killed and raped 33 boys. These boys were raped, tortured, and then killed, as previously stated. Um, 27 bodies were actually found underneath his house. And then an extra fact would be that before his conviction in 1980, 12 years before he was convicted for sexually assaulting a teenage boy, and then from there he was sent to Iowa... Iowa State Men's Reformatory. So I did a victim example in 1978 when the authorities suspected him in the investigation of Robert Price due to being last seen with him. They noticed a strong smell in the house and authorities thought it was a damaged sewer. Later on were found receipts in Gacy's home that were linked to the connection to Price and other men that had been reported missing. Okay, so we have a video of Casey, like, going over all the photos of his victims, and he's so determined to, like, prove his innocence that he states that he does not remember any of his victims. Okay. Okay. Hope this works. Exiting full screen. Going to the new link. Okay. Start from the beginning. I, I have a lot of things that I've forgotten that I can't remember. For instance, I can go back to my childhood and stuff, and I still remember that, but yet you can I can go into the 70s, and there are a lot of things I can't remember. The same thing with the victims. I've looked at all of, I don't know if, if you notice here, we got pictures of every one of the victims here. And believe it or not, for the last 12 years, I've studied these photos of the victims. And there is no, uh, we, we have a shot of all of the victims together here. And uh, when you look over at the, the photos, I have no recollection of any of them. Never met them. And we've gone over this more than once. They're just names and faces. And when you, when you look at them, uh, the thing of it is, we took it a step further. We went into their backgrounds. I wanted to know where they were at, what schools they attended, who they hung out with, and what kind of activities they were into. And that's what we dug up on each one of the victims. But still, there is no association. None of them never worked for me. None of them, they never went to any places that I ever hung around because I didn't hang, hang around that many places unless you were involved in politics or, or you, if you were involved in clowning, then I might have ran into you. But there's no way I could have run into any of them. Okay, so that was our video. Well, um, we had actually shown this video just because we wanted to get the audience as well as the professor to see how mentally disturbed Gacy was and how um, viewers can see that he doesn't remember his victims. It's just very, it shows that he's mentally disturbed. So we want to get viewers have a feel for how he doesn't remember or chooses not to remember his victims. And then we're starting at his early years in adult life. So in childhood and adolescence, he was born in March of 1942. He grew up with an upper middle class family in Chicago. And then he had an abusive father. His father's name was John Stanley Gacy. And his father would criticize him for being overweight and unathletic. Uh, his father was also a heavy drinker and... Of course, the abusive part, he beat his wife and Gacy in his house's basement. Um, John Wayne Gacy was also a victim of sexual assault. He claimed many instances of sexual assault throughout his childhood, once when he was five years old and once when he was eight. Um, and the last thing about his childhood was that he didn't exhibit the McDonald trial I mean, McDonald Triad, which is known as um, number one, bedwetting, two, fire setting, 
and three torture of small animals. So this triad is um, basically the warning signs in children if they will become um, violent in their older age or become a serial killer. So that was just an interesting fact to put into his childhood. And then as for his adult years, um, a lot of people said he seemed to be well a, a well-adjusted adult. So what this looked like to people was that he ran a successful construction business. Um, he was also in good financial standing. Um, in one of the articles, it actually said he made about $250,000 a year. And then he also volunteered as a clown at orphanage, orphanages and hospitals. So because of this, all these um, things that he did within his adult life, people wouldn't have suspected that he'd become a serial killer. Okay, so I'll be going over the profile of the serial killer. Um, so he was not legally insane because he understood what he was doing, like the crimes that he was committing, and he knew that they were wrong, which means that he was technically sane during all the like crimes and the killings and all that. Um, but he was classified as a high functioning socio or psychopath because he was very charming um, on first impressions. He was very successful. He was like outgoing. And so he found success in every business venture that he entered. But because he was a psychopath, he showed no remorse for any of his victims. Um, some medical experts claim that he could have suffered from borderline schizophrenia. It's not like proved, but it's just like a theory that they came up with. Um, he also showed signs of obsessive compulsive disorder because when he was in prison, he would like log down everything that he was doing within like a five minute time period. So every five minutes he would log like what he did. Um, he was known to be a pathological liar. Um, he was also found to have antisocial personality disorder, which is basically just like another name for a psychopath. Um, but one of the first times that he was um, like sent to prison or whatever, he was um, is he, like recorded or studied by um, medical professionals, like mental health people. And they basically said that absolutely no therapy or medical treatment could help him like not have the antisocial personality disorder so he was just like destined to be like a killer basically um he also tried to attempt to convince mental health professionals that he had multiple personality disorder so he tried to claim that he had a clown personality a policeman personality a politician personality and a contractor personality um that was proved to be false because he was technically sane and that's like a not sane disorder or whatever. Um, he also showed signs of narcissism because he was manipulative and like getting his victims to agree to his like sexual acts. He had a sense of entitlement. He never took accountability. He was always charming at first impressions. He had a dominant personality and he lacked empathy. So he is known as the killer clown because of his extra clown personas. Um, he would volunteer volunteer in um, like children's hospitals, fundraisers, stuff like that, just because he wanted to and he enjoyed being a clown. He had two clown personas. He had Pogo the clown and Patches the clown. Pogo was the happier clown and Patches was a more serious character. I read an article that said that sometimes after his like um, public services, whatever, when he would go out and dress up as a clown, that he would go to bars in his clown persona just just for fun. Um, but it allowed him to regress into his childhood when he would perform. And sometimes he would lure his victims with tricks dressed as the clown. So sometimes he would um, try to show them like a trick with handcuffs. And that's how he would tie them down, basically. But yeah, that's that's why he's known as the killer clown. 
Um, so next we're going into possible influences. Um, more about like the motives behind his killings. So the first one was that Gacy claimed he killed to get rid of bad elements. So the people or the boys who were he was killing, he believed them to be bad elements and wanted to rid them from the earth or from existence. Um, the second one would be arguments with sex workers. So since we know that he was in, um, engaged in sexual acts um, and rape with these victims, um, some of the victims would be uh, sex workers and they would start with a firm price at the beginning of their um, their sexual acts and then after he claimed that they would change the price on him and that's when he become angered enough to kill them and then the third one was that his first kill was in self-defense in quotes uh, but from that first kill he started getting pleasure when he murdered people so after that first kill he realized uh he took pleasure within these acts of violence and that's why our group believes that um, he's a hedonistic killer because he took pleasure within his killing. That's what a hedonistic killer is defined as, taking pleasure or like being indulged by these types of acts. And the next two bullet points, Ryan. So pretty much he would tell young men to give him a job in his construction, in his construction uh, company. So they would go over to his house and ask him for a job and stuff. And that pretty, made it pretty easy for him to take the people inside his house and then do things to them. He would also use uh, sexual instruments on his victims for pleasure, such as like handcuffs and poking them and stuff. And then based on those two bullet points, it furthers or like reinforces our group's understanding that he's a hedonistic killer. So the prosecution and sentencing is during the trials of Gacy, he testified as he suffered from psychosis, psycho psychosis, or I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm sorry, so the psychosis, and he wasn't able to control his behavior. He would, um, Gacy would, uh, Gacy spent 14 years on death row. This is a time period where he would do painting of clowns in the meantime, and he would sell it to make a lot of money selling it almost to a thousand dollars and on may 10 1994 john wacy john wayne gacy was put to death by injection in illinois sorry oh good so some external factors that john wayne gacy had as to why he would sexually assault and murder 33 young men and boys so it started in his early childhood when he was constantly abused by his drunken father his father noticed that Gacy had an attraction to men, so, so he would just call him names and make fun of him, call him like sissy and stuff, which kind of further emphasized his homosexual nature. And at the age of five, he was sexually assaulted by a mentally retarded 15-year-old girl who took off his clothes and fondled him. And when Gacy was eight years old, he was molested by a family friend. The family friend would take him out for ice cream, and since they used to watch um, like wrestling shows on the TV, they would do wrestling moves to like have fun and stuff. But the man would put him into wrestling holds to take advantage of Gacy and touch him in the car. And after running away from home at the age of around 18, he got a job as a mortuary assistant. And since he didn't have a place to stay, the owner allowed him to live there. And some accounts say that he would talk to the dead bodies of boys and undress them at night when no one was around. He left the job before they could confront him about that, though. Hmm. And some... in. Some internal uh, factors about John Wayne Gacy was that he claimed to have been bisexual, but he had many uh, multiple, many sexual encounters with boys and men throughout his life. Uh, in 1968, he was evaluated by a psychiatrist, and he showed signs of being a sexual psychopath and would require constant monitoring, but they didn't monitor him. He was also diagnosed with uh, sadism, which is also reflected in the condition of how his victims' bodies were found. A few of them were stabbed, had hot wax poured on them, drowned, or even urinated on. Most of them were tortured, raped, and asphyxiated.
And then that was the last of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you.